we've got our database working pretty well, adding to it, retrieving, deleting individual elements, modifying individual elements. I want to then now mention the nuclear option, which is delete the whole database to start over. We need some setup here. Uh, I think what I want to do is add, just like we've got our, our header, I want to add a footer at the very bottom with a little like gear for options. We can add it to the top, but uh, let's add a brand new footer at the bottom of the screen with the gear. And then um, that'll be clicked. It'll open up a new screen that says, you're about to delete the database. This is very dangerous, blah, 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 some confirmation. Then they can cancel if they really don't want to, or click OK to really delete it. And then it'll delete it, and we'll have a brand new database. So we'll get back to our code. We'll get back to our index file. And we need to find the spot where we've got the add a class. It should be at the very bottom of your code. You've got your section on line 298, header, article. So right after div, or that is right after article, before the end of section line 314, we will add a footer down there. So we'll add the footer tag, data role footer, data position fixed, So remember the footer is the H4. I don't really want there to be text down there, but I believe what we need to do is put one of these non-breaking spaces again, just a little placeholder in an invisible space character H4 within the footer then I'm going to have um, options. But this will be a, a button, so I'll wrap the A tag around it. href, we'll point that over to pound, um, uh, delete, warning, or just warning, or just del warning, del warn, sure, del warn. This will be our warning screen that we're going to delete everything. Data role. Well, this will become actually not a data role, uh, just an icon. So data icon, we'll use gear. The gear is our little, um, actually, are we already using the gear? I think we're already using the gear for computers. We don't want to confuse people. So let's see another jQuery icon. Maybe that, what's that one about power on and off? But maybe that's confusing also. That's why you design your own icons. And let's see. What's a good icon to say we're about to delete everything? Is there a little mushroom cloud here, maybe? We're already using delete for other things. Let's use power. Alert. Oh, yeah, that's nice and scary. Alert. Um, yeah, so we can do alert or, or power. Uh, so here, gear won't work. We've already, we're already using gear for PC. Maybe PC to, still doesn't work for that one. So whatever, maybe alert. I'll try power for a little bit. We'll see what it looks like to decide. 
Now I only want the icon, so we'll do data icon pass, data icon position, and we will have its uh, value as no text. It's options, but I don't want it to say the word options, I only want it to show the icon. When I click this, I want it to open a new screen that will give us a big scary warning. Data transition pop. This is going to be a pop-up screen. And I want that icon I want that icon to appear on the right side. Oh, it's kind of weird there. Oh, I know why. It'll get fixed in a moment. But it's on the left side. I want it to appear on the right side. The spacing should fix itself in just a moment. Uh, because I need one more item here. I need a class. I've got a class that I can use built into jQuery Mobile to align it to the right. And that should get rid of that weird space. So we have. Um, class. Remember class or ID is the last attribute. And this will be uh, UI-BTN-right. This should align this icon to the right of whatever already is there, which is our empty space. Power looks nice, but it might not be conceptually correct, so maybe I will go with alert. But anyway, there we're, we're putting in a button so that it's at the bottom of this screen, and uh, this will create a pop-up to go through the process of deleting. And it shouldn't be a simple yes or no. It should be a little bit more complex, because we're about to delete everything. This is pointing over to Del Warn. So that means we need to create a section uh, for that. So after this section, which is the add a class screen, we'll create a new section. Data role page. ID Del Warren. Now this one, uh, because I want it to behave like a pop-up, I add one more attribute. Data role separates it from the other pages, but it won't behave like a pop-up unless I further add the attribute data dialog equals true. Behave like a dialog box. And with the preceding data transition of pop, it really then feels like here's a pop-up dialog box that is appearing. It'll have a simple header. And a data attribute of header. Call this little box um, delete data. And we'll need the article. Role of main. Class of UI dash content. The same things as the other things we've worked with.
We'll write something in the H2, maybe a big old scary warning. Simple paragraph. Say, you are about to delete all your data. Proceed. Now, one thing we haven't looked at via jQuery mobile is the ability to make these, uh, these other kinds of pop-ups. This is a screen that is a complete screen type of pop-up. We have these other pop-ups that are more like tool tips. When you hover your mouse over something or when you click on something, you get a, um, you get a simpler type of little pop-up with some feedback, not a big old defined screen like this. What I want to do is have the ability then for people to proceed in deleting, and then it'll give you some feedback, data deleted. Or if they chicken out and cancel, it'll say, thank you for not deleting. You know, something a simple little one word or sentence that pops up briefly, animated, to give us some feedback. That's a jQuery uh, mobile element. This is a pop-up box, but in the documentation it's more of a dialogue box. And what, we're, what I'm saying we're about to add is the pop-up. So the terminology kind of bleeds together. This is a dialogue box. We're going to create a pop-up when the person decides to delete or not. So in my code, the way that works is I can define all of these messages that will appear depending on different circumstances. We could do this also when we add data to the database. We get a, we remember we get the feedback message on screen at the bottom that simply says saved. We can make it nicer so that it's a simple pop-up that says saved. It animates and it looks nice. We might get back to that, but for this uh, we're going to add these, these uh, messages. Uh, we need to add them within the article. They're related to what's happening in this section, specifically in this article. So in the article, we'll use a div inside of the div we we can then have our messages. One message would be such as um, all data deleted. We'll have another message that could say Canceled. By themselves, of course, these divs don't really have any meaning. So we've got some jQuery mobile attributes to make them behave how we want. The first one, data role, pop-up. We've seen page, we've seen button, etc. Here's a new one, pop-up. This will make a simple pop-up. This should have a class based on the specification UI-content, just like the main article. So this will behave like a pop-up and have some form, the UI content. It needs an ID so that we can 
reference it so that we can use it, so we can make it pop up when we need it. ID, and we'll call this db deleted. The next one needs the same thing, data role, pop up, class, UI content, and then the unique ID. We'll call this one db cancelled. So we can create as many of these as we want. They will not be visible until we call them because of their data role. They're invisible. They take up space in your app, of course, a few bytes or kilobytes, but they don't show up until we, we call them. They should not appear. So then we'll create a button to um, to trigger this. We'll ask the user the question, are you sure you want to delete? Let's go back and create a button after this proceed. Um, I can make it say um, delete everything. That'll be a button, a tag. href isn't going to go anywhere, so we will just put the dummy link. We want it to behave like a button. Data role, button. Data icon. Use one called forbidden. ID, BTN. I think we already used BTN delete. We'll call it BTN nuke. This will take everything out. That means we need uh, the JavaScript, the jQuery, to make that button active, to run a function. The function will ask the question, do you really want to delete? Then we can have cancel or yes, and then it'll deal with either cancel or deal with yes. I'm going to save that HTML file. If I take a quick look in a quick browser run, it's not going to work yet, of course. I don't have to run it as a real Cordova, I mean a taco command yet. I'm just going to run it very quickly on my Chrome. So I've got the button pops up there, delete everything, doesn't do anything yet. 
So uh, it'll save my HTML. I'll go over to the JavaScript. We'll go to the end. 204 is where my final update class function is at. Then the onDeviceReady function ends. Maybe add a comment there. And on device ready. I'm going to lose track. What is that curly brace hanging around there for? Well, that's my on device ready end. Before that ends, I'll give myself some space. And we need to create our jQuery selector so that we can make that button active. We're trying to select the pound BTN nuke on click. So we'll have a callback function. Delete DB. And then, as always, we have to define what does delete db do. So we've, we've had uh, JavaScript code to deal with conditions. We had an if-else statement to deal with a couple of possibilities, a couple of conditions. We had if-else. We had the for loop. We had the condition there about have we run out of objects to display. Here we have another loop, another conditional statement that we can work with that will allow us to, ch uh, to check from a finite amount of possibilities. We're going to have the user delete. The possibilities are that they agree to delete or they disagree to delete. So a couple there. It could be furthermore possibilities. So we'll have this particular uh, conditional statement called switch. We're going to, I suppose, switch between different possibilities. The syntax for this is we will write switch, open close, parentheses, open close, curly brace, but I'm going to push those curly braces to their own lines. This is a switch. Within those curly braces, we will check for some condition or some sort of question. Then we have various cases in case this happens, in case that happens, in case that happens, and then a default case, in case none of my possibilities happen. So then we define case. Um, we're going to define something here. For I'll just put a placeholder x, and then colon. This is going to lead to some results. xxx. Just going to put a basic syntax, and then um, Break. You could have the possibility also, next line, it could be a different case. You see these blocks here, we're going to ask for something, there may be this case, there may be that case, etc. If it's this particular case, then we can run as many commands as we want. That breaks, nothing else executes. If I didn't think of every possibility, we have the default case.
all of this together is, is our switch. What's that? What's that? Oh, yes. Default. All of this is our switch uh, statement basic syntax. Uh, various possibilities. I can think of as many as I want here. We're not going to have that many, either deleted or not. But just check that your syntax looks like mine. Is that uh, switch? Oh, yes, switch. Switch. I didn't misspell case, did I? Okay, switch, case, default. <laughs> Uh, from the documentation that I read, it's good practice to have it too. Uh, even though it's the very last thing and it's the last possibility, it's just good practice to also have it. Okay, so the way this will work is we're going to click the button and it's going to go through all of these cases. What it's going to ask then is we have, we've had the alert JavaScript method. We also have a couple of other ones. One is like one is called confirm. Do you want to confirm something? And it's simply yes or no, basically. So inside of switch, we will write confirm. It's a method, so it's got its open and close parentheses. The message that we're going to give the user in in quotes as a string. You are about to delete everything. New line confirm. The confirm method gives back either true or false. So our cases, instead of xxx, will be true or false. If we had a more complex thing that we're asking for, well, we might have true, false, maybe, you know, a variety of cases, a variety of possibilities from this switch, this case, that case, this case, etc. To see if this is working, we'll just put some simple console output. Our true case, our console will say uh, agreed. Our false, our cancellation, we'll have it say denied. Those should be the only two possibilities. There could be some other form of possibility that happens. So going to console log their third option. Up to this point, uh, we should be able to save and test this. Now we're going to have to test it in, in Taco via taco. We can't do the uh, simple run in the browser anymore because this is all in on device ready. So save all your files and run it in, in whatever way you want. I will run it through taco browser. I'm gonna check I'm gonna check these things. I'm gonna check first of all is is this whole question being asked? Uh, is my event handler working properly? That could be one failure point. That could be that you named your your ID wrong. Then you want to then you want to see that it pops up asking you the question. Then you click the conf confirm button and check your console. It should then say agreed. You can test it again. Press cancellation. See how that works. It should give you disagreed. And I don't think we'll be able to force the third option since. Confirm, confirm really only gives you two. I'm going to clear my console here just to have it nicer for the moment. I'm going to go here. Delete everything. Get the pop-up. You're about to delete everything. Confirm. 
click OK, showed agreed. Try that again, click Cancel, denied. I do have also this little X up here, which is also a, a false. Let's pause there. You should be getting agreed or disagreed, agreed or denied, based on these two that you click. of our switch. We're giving ourselves some console output but we have those pop-up messages for a reason to show the user so we can we can fire these we can show these remember we wrote uh, we wrote these all data deleted and we wrote cancel we can make these appear via JavaScript whereas everything else usually we've done it via user input that they that they click a button something happens. We can make anything display on screen, a whole page, a dialog box, or a pop-up via code. So that's what we need to do here. We need to show one of those depending on what the person clicked. So after my console log output of agreed, I need to activate my jQuery selector, which will be different than before. Uh, but we've got the db deleted. Is that what we called it? We called it db deleted. Yes, so we have db deleted and db canceled. db deleted. We're saying, okay, this, uh, this particular message, we're going to display it on screen. This will be different. We have dot pop up. We had previously dot on click because we still needed the user's input. Here, we're not getting the user's input directly. We're getting it as a result from confirm. Inside of the pop up, we have some uh, some parameters. We have open. Let's open. Let's display this div that has this message. And then we want to specify where on screen and what kind of animation. So comma, JSON, to give it a couple of, of um, parameters. It's not pure JSON because we have to write it uh, without the uh, quotes here, position 2, quotes here, window. If we look up the jQuery mobile specification, it'll tell us. You can make pop-ups. You can make them appear in the middle of the screen. You can make them appear in the corner. You can make them appear where you've clicked. We've said, let's position this pop-up in the middle of the window. Pastion. Well, that's the alternate spelling. Position. position 2. And notice capital T there. This is required for jQuery mobile. Comma. We'll have another key and value. Transition. We want an animation here. We have data transition for most purposes. And then we've got, we can call it via a little programming here, slide up. We had data transition equals slide up. Well, here's the way to make that happen programmatically. Let's copy this whole line because we want the same thing to happen if a person had canceled. If we wrote this properly, we'll just save ourselves a little bit of effort.
always check your code. This actually should be db deleted, not delete db. db deleted. The first one. db deleted, db cancelled. just for something different to look at, slide down. Go ahead and save this and run this in, uh, in Taco. What we're trying to do is make, the, make those divs display, those divs that are hidden with those messages, those pop-up messages, they're hidden. They're, they should then open, they should display and animate. One will slide up, one will slide down. They should be positioned to the to the window itself, the center of the screen, basically. Um, be careful here that you're calling them properly. I've got the console output, but I of course want to see something for the user. Delete everything? Maybe not. Cancel? run that in my device just to confirm So that should open up, if you've all spelled it right, that should open up the those little pop-ups to the user. Not working on mine. Did anyone get that to work? That little pop-up, little pop-up messages. I seem to recall when I was testing this a while ago. This was something that wasn't quite working, but it worked on other instances. I'm gonna have to look up why this one is not behaving. Notice it's giving us an uncut type error, and it's saying there's a problem in jQuery. I remember seeing this weeks ago when I was testing this, but forgot what I did to fix it. Um, so it's not exactly popping up like it's supposed to, but we can work with it. Um, the concept though is, is working. The switch and the cases are working. It is giving denied. It is giving or agreed. That part is working. It's just not showing a little bit of icing on the cake that I wanted. So for the moment I'm going to move on. I have to look up why it doesn't want to work. Uh, I want to move on to the further part. Okay, we have a system for a person to approve deleting of the database and a system to deny that. If they've approved, if they read the warning and they really want to delete it, let's go ahead and delete the database. 
What this requires is looking over at pouch db documentation. We have a relatively simple command db dot destroy or dot destroy really. We have destroy. Um, but as we were to to work with this and, and beta test it, we would see okay, we've deleted the database. Then we have no more database to continue to add classes. I wanted to delete the database to start over to add more classes. If I simply dis delete the database, then I have no database, nothing to add to, so I have to recreate the database. I have to delete the database and recreate it, reinitialize the database. So we're going to rewrite a little bit our existing code to be able to do this, to be able to delete and bring back a database. So let's let's back up to about line 92. We have simply here, let's create a variable to create the database to store the database object, new PouchDB. Well, that worked as it currently is because we never thought about deleting the database. Let's change our code here just a little bit. Let's break var db all by itself like that and end the line. We're creating the database variable without really setting it to anything yet. Then I'm moving it over here, new pouch db, and then db like that. What I want to do is I want to wrap up the actual creation of the database in a function so I can then create the database at will whenever I want, reinitialize a new database. And so I'm going to tab these guys over a little bit because I'm going to wrap a function. around those two. I'll call it init db, initialize database. So I'm defining the variable as a global scope. I have var variable, I have var outside of the function. It's going to exist and be usable throughout my whole project. If I had done var inside of init db, I would only really be able to use it inside of there. The scope is limited to inside the database, inside the init db. This way then, I'm initializing, I'm creating the variable and then setting it to the database, pulling pulling back our info. And then actually, inside the function, one more thing, return db. I've done something to that database. I've uh, instantiated a pouch db uh, object. I'm going to kick that back out of the database, out of the init database, so that I can actually use it. So we've got return space db. And because now it's in a function, the database will not work unless we also fire the init db early on. Let's save it and run it. It's not going to work just yet. But let's save it and run it to make sure we didn't break anything. I want it to behave as it's as it as it's been working. It should work exactly the same as before. You're currently saved classes should still be there. You should be able to add a class, delete a class, just do a quick test. It should still work as before. If that works, then we will destroy the database and reinitialize the database.
I get that promise that I've been getting, I go to my classes, show classes, the existent classes are there. Let's add something. It's adding it, so okay, it should be behaving as before. Again, I can fully test it by doing all of this, but it should behave as before. Okay, so um, that uh, we set that up in order to reinitialize the database easily. We'll go back to our switch, and we've got the part of true, and we've got the part of false. If it was true, if they said yes, let's delete it, we then need to actually delete it inside of true. So we've got our console log, we've got our pop-up that isn't quite popping up, we've got break before break, New line, db.destroy method. We've got the database object. We're going to use the destroy method of, uh, of pouch. We're going to destroy the database. Uh, this basically just has a callback function. Uh, I'm going to break up the, the parentheses. Well, before I break it up, let me write it like this. Uh, function, callback, open close, curly braces. And then we have error, we have result. So I, I backtracked a little bit. Before I break that into multiple lines, I just want to put it together like this so that I make sure I don't have any missing or extraneous closers. This one doesn't take any parameters because I'm already saying db, the database destroy it, so no parameters, but I'm getting a callback function as before, error or result. I want to deal with if, I want to deal with else as before. Okay, now I'll break that up. I'm breaking it at the curly braces. It's curly brace parenthesis semicolon, parenthesis from destroy. My callback will be an if else statement or conditional. I'm checking was there an error? If there was, give the user an alert. It might not be a very useful alert to them, so we'll simply just say error contact the developer. Because we need to see here what could be some possible errors to decide on what to tell the user. So that'll give us back an error object where we might have some properties to, to work with. If there wasn't an error, then there was success, there was result. Let's say console log, show me that result. And then init db, initialize a new database. If this all worked, I have no database anymore. Therefore, initialize a new one to be able to start to save classes again. I can reuse the same name as before. I don't have to invent a brand new database name. I'm going to reuse the same one because I deleted it. It doesn't exist. It's not reserved anymore. So I can reuse the same name. My point of this pop-up, which doesn't want to work, is this is when it should pop up and say, you deleted everything. So I'm going to move that pop-up uh, after the initialization was in the else statement. So this pop-up is supposed to happen after successful deletion. Successful deletion is happening under else. Move it there, it's not quite working, but we'll figure it out. And I suppose that we don't really need that agreed anymore. <clears throat> uh, 
but here then is okay we the person has confirmed they've gone to true so destroy it there could be some sort of error that happens at that point pretty unlikely because we're specifying the only database that exists the DB object I could have misspelled it like I've been doing it all night and it could have been something else and then it could have been an error but it would be an easy one to catch my classes warning delete everything click OK agreed I got the agreed first, about to delete, agreed, object, OK, true. You really only get an OK, true out of it. Again, I'm ignoring this prevent default one at the moment. Let me go back. Show classes, nothing to show. OK, can I add a class? Yep, new class. class. Okay, I'm tired of all of that. Let me try it again. Delete that. Delete everything. Uh, maybe not. Cancel. So nothing happens. My data is still there. Delete again. Click OK. Should give me some feedback. Come back here. Huh. So it did it, but the, it was still visible on screen, so I should possibly then say also redraw the table so I've got a table of data I'm going to delete the database again delete it, if I go back it deleted it internally but it's still showing data until I click show classes so I can add show classes also to my true switch Show classes. So what I'm saying is if all of this worked, uh, initialize the database, redraw the table because now there's nothing in it. Um, so you just show classes, show the latest version of the classes, which is an empty table with just my headings. We could write some code to instead of redrawing an empty table, we could hide that whole div. Then we would have to further write more code to show the div again. So we could do a toggle. Again, the, the computer doesn't know what you want. Logically, I know what I want. Delete everything and hide it. But I have to write code to do that. Because then it's hidden. It won't show up again, perhaps, until I choose to show it. Saving that, I'm deleting everything. Go back. One more table.
Okay, so if you were testing it up to this point, it's uh, pretty much working. Still a little polish that it could have. We're getting to the end of the day, but we spent the day uh, integrating the uh, database into the database feature into our project. It's got all the operations about saving, retrieving, modifying, deleting data, and the whole database. Um, I'm going to wrap up very soon, and we'll have some lab time. I'll put my code there in a moment, but any questions on what we looked at so far today? Yes, I'm going to put the code in the network folder just a moment. So I'm going to save my work at this point. I'm going to copy my code over to the network folder. We'll have a little lab time until 9.30, and uh, we'll continue next Tuesday.